on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. Also by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Also brought to you by Shields. We're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa football's 2002 team had a profound impact on Coach Kirk Ferentz's run of excellence to present day that includes four Big Ten championships and 20 bowl games. Recently, the team was honored on its 20th anniversary. I visited with several of the star players from that era, and you'll hear from them next on Fight for Iowa. Brought to you by Athletico, Iowa Corn, and Shields. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. Oh, you know that old injury of yours, the one in your knee or maybe back? Instead of going to the doctor and then doing physical therapy, why not start with therapy first? Athletico Physical Therapy is changing the whole healing process around. Their physical therapist will find the source of your pain and help fix it. Start with them and start living pain-free. Ah, just like that. It all starts with Athletico Physical Therapy. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. No prescription needed. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. The 2002 Iowa team had no less than four national award winners and future stars Chad Greenway, Abdul Hodge, and Jonathan Babineau. The stat sheet stuffers included Mackey Award winner Dallas Clark, Outland Trophy recipient Robert Gallery, Groza Award kicking master Nate Kading, and the incomparable quarterback Brad Banks. Banks found his way to Iowa after two years at Central Florida University and Hines Community College. The Bell Glade, Florida native played sparingly in 2001 and then exploded on the landscape in 2002, leading the Hawkeyes to an 11-1 record, an undefeated 8-0 Big Ten slate, a final number 8 ranking, and a Heisman runner-up to another quarterback, Carson Palmer of Southern Cal, who the Hawkeyes lost to in that year's Orange Bowl. Banks won the Davy O'Brien Trophy and claimed the Associated Press Player of the Year nod. Named honorary captain for this season's Michigan game, Banks' message to the team has been resonating in the Iowa locker room ever since Kirk Ferentz arrived. We work hard. We do all the right things. We... You know, we prepared ourselves, and I think it was more so about having fun with each other in these type of games. And not only just this game, but as we go on with the season and to enjoy each other, to respect each other, to feed off each other, to hold each other accountable, and most importantly, hold yourself accountable. Um, that was kind of what I, you know, what I brought in there and, and, and talked about goals, how I set the bar high and you know, when, when the game was over, you had some not-so-bad numbers. Um, so it, it was, you know, just have fun and enjoy each other. You came here from the deep south, Florida, yeah. and uh, Iowa took a chance on you. Kirk yeah. Ferentz saw something. Kenny O'Keefe saw something in Brad Banks. Uh, uh, you must be grateful, as Iowa is grateful, that you found your way to Kinnick Stadium. Yeah, I wish it could have been longer, Dolph, and uh, had – great bunch of guys to be around great coaches and so I just wanted to make the most of it and yeah I was definitely uh, appreciative of having the chance to play here in this this wonderful university and um, with the, the best fans in the land so it don't get no better Brad Banks uh, such a cast of characters great talent on that team 20 years ago I think of you Heisman runner up uh, Gallery Outland Trophy uh, Dallas Clark, John Mackey, uh, Nate Kading, the Groza yeah, award, we, award winner. I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, but uh, <laughs> what? Uh, a lot of great individuals. What what brought this group together as a team? All th- all three phases. I, I think it was just the, uh, you know, everyone wanted to compete and everybody respected each other. Um, I think that was the biggest thing about our group, and everyone wanted to leave their mark. Everyone wanted to have fun and enjoy each other and compete against each other in games, you know, with different stats and with different things of that nature and make it all fun. Um, 
we had a loaded, loaded team, and you know, practices were competitive, workouts were competitive, training table was competitive. I mean, we competed all over the place, and so I think with that type of level of competition, we couldn't do number be great. Banks won the Chicago Tribune Silver Football Award as Big Ten Most Valuable Player. Iowa and Ohio State both finished 8-0 and but did not play each other in 2002. Defensive back Derek Pagel from Nashua Plainfield High School walked on that season. Pagel became a special team star and then teamed with the great Bob Sanders at safety, picking off four passes his senior year to lead the team. Drafted by the New York Jets, Pagel also played in Dallas and Arizona, wrote a book entitled Growing Up Hawkeye. And now that he's all grown up, Pagel can't believe how fast time flies. Not many of these guys so far that I've seen have aged a day yet. So, Well, yeah. you still look pretty good. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. I, I try my best, but um, yeah, this is cool. I've, I've never been in the facility before. This is my first time. I think it's pretty cool that they open it up for the players to come back and do 20 years is a special occasion, right? But just to get to see you and, you know, Grant Stein and Gallery, I haven't seen those those guys probably, if it wasn't 10 year, maybe it was 20, it's been 20 years. And this team deserves to be feated uh, for uh, uh, 11 wins, Big Ten championship, uh, 8-0 in the, in the conference. And, you know, I, I'm sure the players regret it. I, I always felt cheated that uh, – the Hawks never got to play Ohio State. Now they're ranked number one, and uh, but they did get to play Southern Cal. Yep. But it uh, would have been nice to see the Buckeyes and the Hawks get together that year. That gets talked about all the time. And uh, I guess I'm probably obviously a little biased, but I do tell people, like, I wish that game would have taken place. And I don't care if it was at Ohio State or in Kinnick. <laughs> we know who would have won that game. I can't disagree with you, my man. Uh, the defense was as spectacular then as it is today, especially in that uh, secondary? I think, you know, uh, attribute that to Phil Parker, what he's done, the success he's had. Um, and Norm Parker before yeah, him. I, and I, you know, he was, he's, a, he's a product of, of Norm, right? So he's done a great job. Um, I always try to keep uh, the mentality of what kind of defense are they playing or is this a zone, or is this man coverage? But the game has changed so much in 20 years that I can't keep up with it for the first couple of years, five, 10 years. I feel like I keep up with their coverages. But um, I think it's so complex now and with the rule changes too. kind of changes everything and how they how they play in the positions that they play. But he stayed on top of the game. And I, I mean, how do you not like watching the Iowa defense on the field? Obviously, we don't keep them out there all, all the whole game, but the way they put up points – and uh, create the turnovers. I just feel like that mentality's never changed in 20 years. They've, they've always stayed consistent. Coming from small-town Iowa, you have to appreciate what uh, Cooper DeGene has done in his uh, short career. Yeah, uh, amazing. I uh, just got asked about him a, a couple times last week, and I'm like, it just seems to be one step ahead of it. I feel like, you know, whether it's like last week's interception for a touchdown, unbelievable, but that crossing route, he just let it go. It's like he knew where the ball was being thrown before the quarterback threw the ball. And you know what good film study is all about. It, it sure looks to me like he's, he's in the film room a lot. He sure does, and I, I truly believe he probably is. And I, and I think that takes good players uh, to make them great. It just takes them to another level. Enjoy the weekend. Great to have you back in town, bud. I uh, appreciate it, Gary. And I, and I need to ask you before I leave here, because I've asked you before many times, I get the same answer. What was your favorite year to be a Hawkeye? Because <laughs> you always say 2002. <laughs> let me. <laughs> but I think you might just me, be lying to me to make me feel Oh, good. no, no. No, I mean, I love that 2002 team. You know, that was a team that kind of put Kirk Ferentz on the plane that it's on that, that he that he and his program is on and let me let me ask you this what is it about Kirk Ferentz staying power you played for him and when he was just a young lad um I just think he does all the little things and I think he does them right uh I think he brings on good quality individuals good staff just stays consistent you know and I think that consistency has kind of persevered through the years and, and brought him into the position he's in today Pagel was an all-Big Ten conference selection and team captain by the time he left Iowa and now works in sales in Des Moines. I'll have more on the 2002 Hawkeyes after this brief pause on Fight for Iowa. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. 
There's a sense of pride that comes for the life of a farmer. How many people can say they have a famous tan named after them? Or be known for their wave when they drive past neighbors and strangers alike on a two-lane road? Whether it's a farmer's tan or the farmer's wave, we are proud to be known for a lot of things. We feel that pride every night at the dinner table, knowing we feed our family and yours. Iowa Corn is proud to be on the sidelines cheering on the Iowa Hawkeyes. In Iowa, we grow corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Emmitsburg High School, a football power in Iowa, produced stars Bruce Nelson and Grant Steen in the early 2000s. Both found their way to Iowa City. Steen walked on and became an all-Big Ten linebacker in 2002 and 03 and set a single-game record with three interceptions against Indiana. Steen played in 37 of 39 games that he suited up. Developing a passion for strength and conditioning, Steen is now a coach with the Seattle Seahawks after stops at Southern Cal and the University of Washington. Steen sees many similarities with today's Hawkeye program and when he was in school. Building a program takes time, and our, our practices were physical. We were in pads. Um, there, were, there were weeks where we were in pads on Friday, and that's what it took to get the program going at that time. Um, and then as we built the program and got better the practices were a little more what you probably see now and streamlined Um, but there was only one way to do it that was hard work and being physical and that's what you saw you know in the in the early 2000s and what you see now it's it's a physical program and you know that won't change now you're uh, strength and conditioning with the Seattle Seahawks. Good for you. We saw you at the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago. So you, you bounced around to some great universities, and now you're in the NFL. Yeah, um, I've, I, I've made the West Coast tour. Um, this is my second time in Seattle. I've coached at, I coached at UW in 2013, so I'm excited to be coaching for the Seahawks. It's a, a fun program. You know, they do things right. Um, Coach Carroll sets the tempo with his energy and enthusiasm. Um, and it's easy to follow along with that. I know it's tough to say goodbye to Russell Wilson, but welcome Noah Fant. Yeah, I, we have two Hawkeyes. We have Noah Fant. We have Austin Blythe. Um, so I have a couple guys to uh, you know keep up on our uh, Hawkeye stuff going on. And, and actually, Keegan Johnson's brother, Cade, is a practice squad receiver for us. So I get the inside scoop from Cade every now and again. Um, so the more Hawkeyes, the better. You were an outstanding linebacker at Iowa, Emmitsburg, a great program. Uh, when you watch Jack Campbell play, uh, what comes to mind first? Um, I see a guy that can run around who's really athletic, a guy that's becoming more physical and more consistent with his play. Um, I've had the pleasure to meet him a couple times coming back here. He's a quiet guy. Like, he won't talk at all. You have to prod everything out of him. But I think that's his the way he plays, too. He's intense, makes big plays in a timely manner, um, and he's got a bright future for him. I hope he's a Seahawk someday. He'll be, he'll be playing on Sunday somewhere. Uh, and to your point, hopefully it's in Seattle, huh? You know, uh, when you look at him, Benson, uh, Jay Higgins, Justin Jacobs, now the cash back is yeah. kind of like a hybrid uh, linebacker. Linebacker tradition lives on at Iowa. It does. They're, they're, they're forcing the Leo backer off the field. I don't know. I might have to talk to somebody about good. that. Norm might not like that too much. But, um, yeah, the, the, every position here has such a great tradition. You know, linebacker, offensive line, you name it. You know, you can look back through, you know, the, the history books and see great players at every position. And, you know, like we were talking about, like the connection of the, the years past and now is a really cool deal. I don't think too many people would be surprised to hear it's hard work. You know, it's showing up. It's doing it day in, day out, being consistent. Um, the one thing that I love about Coach Ferentz is he's never too high. He's never too low. And I've been around coaches in my career now that you never know what they're going to be like when they walk in the door. And it means a lot to a, a player and now me as a coach when you know what you can expect from somebody. And that's what I try to do um, as a coach now, just always be consistent. Steen stays in touch with the college game as a member of the Collegiate Strength and Conditioning Coaches Association. A star at Minneapolis De La Salle High School, Derek Robinson was a six foot four, two hundred ninety pound defensive end whose Iowa teams went thirty eight and twelve from two thousand one through 04, playing in the Alamo, Outback, and the now infamous Capital One Bowl. 
Robinson, affectionately known as D-Rob, admitted he got sideways a few times with Kirk Ferentz and the coaching staff, but the head man embraced him with tough love, telling him to keep rolling up his sleeves, keep trying. Robinson did just that and played six years in the NFL. I just think about all the work we put together and all the togetherness that we have. We still have this. You know, the people, the guys that's coming, we can still call on each other. You know, and and you can't, that's a blessing, and and it's and you know in its own because you go to other uh, organizations or other schools, it's not like that. It's not like that. And the fact that you, Mr. Dolphin, Coach Ferris, are still here, you know, enabling this tradition is you. You can't ask for anything better, you know. D. Rob, uh, you were here at a time when when Kirk was getting the program back yep. to where Hayden yep. had it in its heyday. Yes. Uh, the team had gone to the Alamo Bowl uh, yes. the year before. Nice seven and five season. Yes. Kading and Bob Sanders leading the way, and uh, and then it all exploded in two thousand two, and then carried on right through Nathan Brad Banks to Nathan Chandler to Drew yes, Tate, yes, and it, and and this program's never looked back. It's I, I, you know the consistency must really impress you. Yes, yes, and I remember my red shirt freshman year. Actually, it was my freshman year. I didn't play, and we were the worst team in the Big Ten. Then we go to the Alamo Bowl. Then all of a sudden we jump all the way to the Orange Bowl. That year. 2002 was our coming out. Mm-hmm. I really think it was our coming out. Ever since that year, I will has been, you know, obviously Coach Hayden has had his time, but I think it, it put a put a a print a stamp in there when uh, uh, Coach Ferris, you know, when we made it to the Orange Bowl and we showed everybody who we were. Coach Ferentz to Coach Parker, Norm Parker. Yeah. You played for Norm. Norm didn't, yes. Norm didn't pick favorites, did he? He was hard on everybody. Hard on everybody. I was just telling my, my significant other how hard he was and how high his expectations were, mm-hmm. which, which no matter what, you had to meet them. Otherwise, you weren't going to be on the field. And you had to behave a certain way, have certain manners and 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 be cordial and that all mattered because I was not only football, you know, you can apply every single thing you learn here into your life, you know, and Coach Parker of course was was somebody that 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 stressed that, you know. From Norm Parker to Phil Parker, you see oh. basically the same defense. And I'm sure when you watch today, when you watch the Hawks of today, you think back to 2002 and 2004 and yes. say, "Hey, we did it that way." Yes, yes, yes. Of course, Coach the second Parker is gonna gonna you know follow the footsteps of of Coach the uh, Coach Norm Parker's you know the great. We are hard nosed school, and. You can still see it in the defense, even in the offense sometimes. Sure. Sure. But on the defense, we ain't, we're not letting nobody get anything. We not we have always been one of the top teams in the country on how many points we're going to let you score on us. Robinson lives in San Diego and works in real estate sales, still rolling up his sleeves, remembering how his time at Iowa changed his life for the better. I'll be right back. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. Here we go. Exciting adventures await. Grab your bucket list and keep the fun going all summer long. Pitch a tent, grab a sleeping bag, and sleep as a family under the stars. Fire up the grill and host a backyard barbecue. Visit a local trail for a hike or a drive to a state park for an all-day family adventure. With all there is to do this summer, we encourage you to get outside and make new memories. Whatever you do this summer, Shields is right there with you. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. 
Thanks again to stars of that 2002 Iowa football team, Big Ten champs, for stopping by Fight for Iowa this week. Now to basketball. The Hawkeyes' mini plan ticket sales are available now. For $45, you can watch Georgia Tech and Wisconsin. There's a $60 gold package where you can see Northwestern, Illinois, and Ohio State. And the $75 black package features Rutgers, Michigan State, and Indiana. Please call 1-800-IA-HAWKS for those mini plans. 1-800-IA-HAWKS or log on to HawkeyeSports.com. I'm Gary Dolphin. That's this week's Fight for Iowa. Thanks for listening, and go Hawks. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast. The Herkey's Voice Podcast, Hawk Talk Replays, exclusive game day content, and more. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.